We first consider several circuits connected to an alternator or oscillator that maintains between its terminals a sinusoidal alternating potential difference given by V equals capital V cosine omega t. Here, capital V is the maximum potential difference or the voltage amplitude and little v is the instantaneous potential difference and omega is the angular frequency equal to 2 pi times the frequency f. In the UK, commercial electric power distribution systems always use a frequency of f equals 50 hertz corresponding to the angular frequency of 2 pi times 50 which is 314 radians per second. For brevity, the alternator or oscillator will be referred to as an AC source. The circuit diagram symbol for an AC source is this here. Analysis of alternating current circuits is facilitated by use of rotating vector diagrams similar to those used in the study of harmonic motion. In such diagrams, the instantaneous value of a quantity that varies sinusoidally with time is represented by the projection onto the horizontal axis of a vector whose length corresponds to the amplitude of the quantity. The vector rotates counterclockwise with constant angular velocity omega. These rotating vectors are called phasors and diagrams containing them are called phasor diagrams. We will find phasors convenient for adding sinusoidal voltages and currents and then we can apply the method of vector addition to combine sinusoidal quantities with phase differences. This is a phasor plot here. The simplest problem in AC circuit analysis consists of a resistor of resistance capital R connected between the terminals of an AC source as in figure A. So we've got an example here. Here's an AC source. There's our resistor between A and B. Suppose the instantaneous potential of point A with respect to point B is given by this equation here, V capital V cosine WT. The instantaneous current I in the resistor is simply V instantaneous V over capital R. So that's obviously just going to be this value here. The maximum current I or current amplitude is uh, the maximum values of those, so that's going to be this here, because uh, <clears throat> obviously the maximum value is when uh, the angle is either 0 or 180 degrees, because cosine uh, 0 is 1 and cosine 180 is 1, so you just get V over R. So that's the maximum current. We can just as well write uh, the current as I equals I, which stands for the maximum current, and that's just a shorthand way of writing uh, the current. So we've got the voltage, and we've got this shorthand way of writing the current, remembering that capital I means V over R, the, the maximum voltage over R. So we, we've, got an, we've got an equation for the current and an equation for the voltage. And you'll see that they're the same, basically. They're both in terms of cosine WT. The current and voltage are both proportional to cosine omega t, so the current is in phase with the voltage. The current and voltage amplitudes from uh, equation 2 are related in the same way as a DC circuit. This figure here shows graphs of I and V as functions of time. So I've drawn, you know, I've, I've drawn the V, and there's the I, and you can see that they're they're basically uh, identical, other than the the amplitudes. Uh, the fact that the curve representing current has a greater amplitude in the diagram is of no significance because the choice of vertical scale for I and V is just arbitrary. The corresponding phasor diagram is given in C. Because I and V, little i and little v, the instantaneous values of the current and, and the voltage are in phase and have the same frequency, the current and voltage phasors rotate together. Their projection on the horizontal axis represents the instantaneous current and voltage respectively. That's the case for this, just, just a simple resistor with uh, an alternating source.